the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Please be seated. So the Ten Commandments are all about baptism. All about it. And I'm not joking, I'm, I'm deadly serious here, extremely serious. This is a literal life and death matter. I don't often say this, but you might even want to take notes on this. But you say, there's not a drop of water even mentioned in the Ten Commandments. And I'm glad you asked, or I asked on your behalf, because that allows me to explain why. God's law calls you to perfection. It doesn't call you to close enough. It's not horseshoes. It's not hand grenades. It's not government work. The Ten Commandments demand that you be perfect in every way, without spot or blemish. Not even Mary Poppins practically perfect in every way, but absolutely, totally perfect in every single way. demands a righteousness that exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees. And guess what? I, I know I tell you this every single week. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. You don't measure up. I don't measure up. We cannot measure up. Scripture is clear. 1 John 1, 8. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. When we confess our sins, what we are doing is we are confessing that we put things before God in our lives or is equal to God. We take his name in vain. We don't keep the Sabbath. We don't keep it holy. We don't honor our father and mother and those in authority. We murder, we commit adultery, we steal, we bear false witness, we covet our neighbor's family, and we covet our neighbor's stuff. We have spots, blemishes, moles, and warts all over our record. And God doesn't grade on a curve. It is 100% our utter failure. Perfection or else. He doesn't sit there and say, well, you tried, you gave your best effort. Here's your participation trophy. It doesn't happen. And that is why the Ten Commandments are all about baptism. Because it delivers to you the perfectness that is Christ's. That he lived those Ten Commandments. That he died for you. That your sins were taken in baptism and put on him. And his righteousness put on on you. The penalty for your sins has been paid for you, and you died once so that you don't have to die again. Baptism is the vehicle. It is the way. As, as one pastor I heard, or, or excuse me, a Christian rapper I heard put it, um, baptism is the plate that the good gifts are given to you. So, so imagine you go to a barbecue, right? Well, how's the barbecue get in front of you? How do you eat those delicious ribs and brisket? comes on a plate. Baptism is the plate that gives the good gifts of salvation, of righteousness to you. That's how his benefits get delivered to you. In baptism, you are made perfect. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. That's Mark 16, 16. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying, Titus 3, 5 through 8. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may have a new life, Romans 6, 4. And baptism is all over Scripture, saving people. Noah and his family in the ark, saved through the flood. The Israelites crossing the Red Sea in the cloud of the Lord. In, uh, in, in the cloud of the Lord. The water from the rock in the wilderness. The Israelites crossing the Jordan. Naaman being cured of leprosy. Jonah being in a fish. John the Baptist. I mean, it's, it's, it's his name. 
the baptism of the Ethiopian eunuch, Jesus commanding baptism, Peter, Peter telling people about uh, to be baptized, Paul talking about what baptism is, what it does, and so many more passages in both the New Testament and the Old Testament. The, the Bible is soaked in baptism. And what does it do? It delivers from sin and death and hell. It marks you as a child of God. It gives you the Holy Spirit, the seal that marks you as one of God's own children. It brings you into Christ. And it declares that what the law demands has already been accomplished. Somebody much smarter than me coined the term, the law says do this and it is never done. Even the third use of the law, we can't keep that perfectly. The law always accuses. So the law says do this and it is never done. The gospel says believe this and it is already done. And baptism is part of the preaching of the gospel. The sharp point of the law is to show us our sins. It is to convict us, to show us that we are not God. And the comfort of the gospel is to tell us that God fulfilled the law in himself, in the person of Jesus Christ. And so the Ten Commandments are all about baptism. They're all about the Lord's Supper. They're all about Christ on the cross and his resurrection from the dead. Because when we read the Ten Commandments, we are convicted of our sin and we lose all hope until we look to Christ. It drives us to his forgiveness. It drives us to his death. It drives us to the waters where that was poured out upon us, to the meal where that is given to us. drives us to the preaching of the word and the absolution. Because the only hope we have is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. God has poured out his forgiveness upon you. And he continues to pour out his forgiveness upon you. John 1, 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. Amen.